looking for a great YouTube network to join, apply for full screen with the link in the description. To trade your games in for a better value, use leaptrade.com and use Broken Games HD as a refer. All right, what's going on, y'all? So I'm going to give you all my Microsoft Xbox 2015 E3 press conference review. I was going to wait till I do all my vlog style videos for the week um, before I do any of the uh, press conference reviews, but a lot of y'all have been harassing me for it. Say, do the damn reviews for these press conferences because y'all want to hear my opinion. So I'm doing it. I'm going to start up with Microsoft. Microsoft's is the first one I actually attended. It's the first one they uh, that was streamed and done overall, and I actually attended it. So let's start off with Microsoft. So overall, I'm very impressed. I was very impressed with Microsoft's press conference. It was very good. It It, it was focused. It was, you know, well structured, and you know, there it, it was a uh, little, very little bullshit involved. You know, they were very straightforward, organized, and to the point. You know, I, I watched it, obviously being there. You know, watched it live, and I'm like, wow, like Phil Spencer really turned this place upside down. He really turned this out. Um, if you notice, they, there was not one mention of Connect. Connect, that word was not said once in the whole press conference. No, as far as my recollection goes, no mention of apps whatsoever. Just games. Just the focus they had was just amazing. And you just know the change came from, uh, you know, Phil Spencer and just the restructuring the company uh, has gone through since, um, you know, the Xbox One launch. But I'm going to just name the content that they showed um, more specific to the exclusive content that's relevant you know not really much going to talk about the third party stuff because that's third party uh unless it's like you know a, one of those third party games it's like exclusive to xbox but also on pc you know i'll uh, i'll mention that too because that still does count first of all so they first started out with halo 5 um obviously you know their biggest game their biggest title halo they came out swinging with that right it looks great, and they showed, they showed a little bit of the single-player campaign um, with Spartan Lock. Uh, the visuals look great. The uh, single-player looks more interesting than the past ones because they're giving, you're going to play the game from two different perspectives, Spartan Lock and also uh, Master Chief. Uh, they told us a little bit about Halo, uh, Halo 5 Warzone. I'm looking at my notes you know, while talking to you. I'm doing it Drake style, looking at the phone um, while freestyling, freestyling. Um, they moved on to ReCore. Uh, I believe that's a, a Xbox One and PC game. It looked like a very interesting concept. Um, it seems like you have some type of a, a mechanical um, partner in which he can, you know, change bodies. Uh, you know, he went from a dog to a, you know, a bigger robot. And I think that they're gonna. Uh, that's how the gameplay is, seems to be because it was just a CGI trailer. But based on the CGI trailer. It seems that's how the game is going to play, where uh, this partner you have, this mechanical partner, can switch uh, into different type of bodies. So the concept looks good. Then, I believe it was Phil Spencer came out and announced, it might have been Phil Spencer, I can't remember exactly, that they were bringing backwards compatibility to the Xbox One. Now, a lot of people, there's been a lot of, uh, you know, there was a lot of division with this. Um, a lot of people saying it's really not that big of a deal. A lot of people saying it is a big deal. I do think it's a big deal, um, even because even though I may not personally take advantage of it, I don't think I'm really going to personally take advantage of it much, I can see why this is such a huge deal. There are a lot of, this will give a lot of people a reason to get rid of their Xbox 360s, and yes, not all of the titles will be compatible when this, uh, you know, when this um, launches, when this is available, but some will be. It'll encourage some people to get off an Xbox 360. They can let, let go of, uh, you know, the Xbox 360, move on to an Xbox One. Um, it's convenient. You know, that's, that's the whole thing about it. it it's, it's a huge convenience thing. Um, because, like me, even though I don't necessarily care for older games, when there's new games on new consoles available, I will play an older game if I can play it on a new platform. My thing has always been, I'm not going to keep an old console to play old games, but I will play an old game if it's available on a new console. That's why I got rid of my PS3. You know, there's no reason for me to have one. It's not worth keeping around to play an old game. But if those PS3 games, 
come to a P, to, come to PlayStation 4? Yeah, I'm, I'm down for it. Same thing across, uh, you know, all these other platforms. So, um, you know, the uh, backwards compatibility to me is, is a bit, is a definitely um, a big deal. And, you know, I just, I just thought backwards compatibility overall was kind of this dead, um, you know, this dead feature that wasn't going to be available on consoles anymore. When they said that, I was like, really? You know, that was really surprising. I didn't think anybody was like, I'm going to move for that anymore, but they, they, they're showing they are listening to their fans and listening to the players. Microsoft definitely showed that they are. Um, the Elite Controller. I actually got to try the Elite Controller. It was uh, available um, to try out on Gears uh, Ultimate Edition, so I did use the uh, Elite Controller on, on Gears, so I got to play Gears Ultimate Edition, 60 frames, 1080p. It looks good. It feels great. Um, they had us, you know, little, uh, little, um, sparring match. Um, they just, you know, put the, uh, you no, know, uh, they took like 10 players each and just put, uh, um, put us against each other and everything like that. Um, and it, it was fun and it's really making me look for, look forward to gears. You know, we got the announcement. It's coming to PC. I might make a separate video about that. Um, only thing I can say about that is I do feel if you have a PC, if you have a PC and you have an Xbox One, I do feel all these games coming to PC does depreciate the value of the Xbox One. It makes having a, it gives you less of a reason to have an Xbox One. And I believe also Killer Instinct because now, I mean, obviously, yeah, I'm going to get the Gears Ultimate Edition on, on a PC. I'm not interested in Killer, I'm not interested in Killer Instinct. But uh, the, the, the Elite Controller, $150. I, I can, I, no, like I said, I use the controller. I can definitely see, I can see why it's over a hundred dollars. I can't say I can see so far, you know, completely why it's 150, but it's, it's, I can definitely see it at least being a $99 controller with all, with all the features and the customization it has. Uh, it's, it's a crazy controller. It will take some use to getting to because pretty much it's like a controller with, with, shoulder buttons but on the back of the controller where your uh middle finger and your um ring finger usually are that's where you have these triggers on the back and you can map them to do certain things like on gears you can use this this button right here that was by your ring finger to run instead of a and uh th and, and things like that so it took took some getting used to um i can't say that I'm all gung-ho for it. I think I, I, I'll be more, I'll still stick to the classical um, Xbox controller and the classical way of playing, but it is convenient because it takes away the reason for you to take your finger off a certain button to press another button. You don't have to do that anymore because you can use your fingers, which are, which are on the back of the controller now. So, but I have long fingers. Y'all see, some of y'all have seen where, how I place my hands on my controller. So, uh, I don't really need that, so I can't say I'll be paying $150 for that controller. Um, Gears Ultimate Edition, like I said, I spoke about it. It's 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 great. Looking forward to to it. That was that was great that they talked about that. Um, I'm not gonna really talk about Fallout 4. You know, Bethesda came out, talk about that a little bit. Plans for Zombies 2, Garden Warfare, yeah, Forza 6. As y'all know, I'm not a huge uh, um, racing fan, but Forza 6. Uh, Turn 10 Studios, they do a great job with, with Forza every single release. Quality product, quality. Um, Dark Souls 3, The Division, Multiplats, Rainbow Six, Multiplats, Gigantic. Um, Gigantic is actually on the showroom floor. I didn't get to play it yet. I definitely will play it tomorrow. But that looks like a, that looks like a good game. Um, that's window, that's uh, PC and Xbox One. Um, sea of Thieves, I like the concept. There's not a lot of... I guess you can call them pirate, um, you know, uh, b uh, pirate game, pirate, you know, games where you're on a ship and there's like ship uh, naval type of warfare. Not a lot of games like that. So um, besides uh, probably um, Assassin's Creed 4, but it's a good concept to, for them to explore into. I believe that's a PC Xbox One game also. Um, Cuphead, I like I like that I like the concept of that game. I like these games that have these rare concepts that haven't been explored yet. This concept of this night like what 1940s cartoon 
style and you know it's a it's a it's a it's a little uh platformer um type shoot 'em up game co-op game it looks really fun it's on the showroom it's on the showroom floor but the line line was hella long for it didn't get to play it either um uh rare replay they announced a lot of these rare classics are coming back i believe yeah and obviously microsoft's own owns rare so this is only available for the xbox one i don't think it's on pc i actually think it's only xbox one um so you know that's a big deal i can't say i'm interested in it i would rather get a new battle toads or a new version for these games but it, it's definitely um it's a great package for a pretty low price uh let's see what we got what else we got fable legends i feel like they've been promoting fable legends forever i don't know is it, i feel like is that game not out yet i don't I'm not a fan of fable i don't follow the series you know uh hololens that that uh that showing was just very impressive with the just the technology and the I can't say it's really something us hardcore gamers at least not with Minecraft and I can't really see yet how they're going to apply it to many hardcore games that me and you would play but it is very impressive it's interesting definitely to watch you know we really we, we really just got to see how these how this VR really transitions into the home. That's what we, we that hasn't happened yet. We gotta see how it translates um, into the home of the consumers and how well it's a hit, right? I don't believe it's just gonna be a fad like motion controls were I, or 3D was. I actually think it will uh, be embraced better than that. Um, and lastly, I believe they topped it off with, oh, I didn't mention Rise of the Tomb Raider. Looks really good. Um, like I said, I'm real skeptical of any game they show, not, not just Microsoft, just any company. I'm real skeptical of any game any company shows. When it looks too good, I'm like, I uh, wonder if it's really going to look like that because it looked really good. And, you know, that's just my first thought when it comes to any game that shows, any company that shows a game. If it looks too good, I'm like, that game looks a little bit too good. I'm sorry. I'm not completely buying it. And Tomb Raider looked really good so you know of course you know and Tomb Raider was my game of the year 2013 right uh so obviously it's going to be solid gameplay this this demo that they showed was just very cinematic it wasn't more you know really Tomb Raider ish gameplay um it was really just cinematic and like this set piece and uh you know it was real dramatic so they wanted to show that but it, it definitely looked good and they topped it off with Gears 4. Um, I'm not exactly thrilled for the new Gears characters they were playing with. I think somebody said the, the guy was a person from um, Gears Judgment. I didn't play Gears Judgment. I only played 1 to 3. Uh, and um, apparently they're, they're, they're like slimming down on the whole uh, steroid look in Gears. Um, you know, because it it's, been, it's been taken over by... Uh, the coalition, formerly known as Black Tusk, so they're like toning down the the buffness and and the juice head look. So yeah, but the overall the character just it was only a short demo, but the characters seemed uninterested. A lot of people were looking forward to seeing Marcus Phoenix, you know, make a return, and he's probably gonna, he might be in the game. He, I mean, he's probably going to be in the game. They're not going to just leave him out because he's a, everybody knows he's a loved character. Um, but he maybe he might be a cameo. Maybe he might be another character you play as. We don't know yet. But the game looked amazing. The gameplay, uh, the gameplay looked looked like good Gears gameplay, um, like great lighting effects, uh, great detail. Um, the only thing I'm concerned about is Gears always explores the same type of environment, right? They don't do different environments go different go to different atmospheres it's it always seems to be like this dark gray black and yes the games have gotten more co color with every game but it's always the same area you get what i'm saying like it just looks so for, familiar right it doesn't look like they're going to exploring other regions or anything like that so that's my only problem with gears it's, it's just the same environment types, similar looking buildings, similar structures. Uh, just we, I would like to see something different in the background 
of where this game takes place is what I'm saying. But oh, other than that, game looks good. Um, yeah, I think the, the highlights were really Halo, um, the backwards compatibility, the Elite Controller, Rise of the Tomb Raider, um, Gears Ultimate Edition, Gears 4, you know, 4 is a 6. Uh, you know, they're, they're definitely out there, and, they, and they, they've got their holiday on lock. They, they know what they're doing. They're set for the holiday. Microsoft is definitely set. And, they, you know, they've they got their front-running games. Um, you know, their hit games lined up, so they're good. And this was a very, uh, this, was, this was overall, from all of the conferences, best E3. Not because I was there, but because none of the, I, I can't say any of the conferences were garbage. Every, all of them were at least decent to um, very good. But I haven't watched Nintendo's yet. I heard it's pretty bad. But every other conference, um, I, not like, I, I heard it was really good. And this, I, everybody is saying this is overall the best E3. And Microsoft definitely started it out right. I really liked their conference. It was really good. So, yeah, that's it, y'all. Uh, I'm probably going to do... I'm going to do EAs next whenever I get around to that. All right, so I'm out of here. Peace.